But we came here, and I remember sitting in this room with a bunch of pastors, and everybody around the circle was just white-skinned like me, and I was wondering why we were having such a hard time building any kind of bridges with the African-American church community. And this guy told me a thing that made it sound like it was the fault of the black churches. It told me a thing where he was like, man, I've been trying, I've been trying to reach them for years and they just don't want to do anything. They don't want to have anything to do with us as if it was, as if it was their hard heartedness, the hard heartedness of the African American community that they weren't willing to be part of this group of pastors that we were beginning to form together. And it was a year or two or three after that, that we were having a follow-up conversation. And he said that he had recently had a new conversation with one of the black pastors in town. And that pastor had said, oh no, we're never going to join that thing. And the guy said, well, why not? And the black pastor said, well, it's because you use the word evangelical in your name. I mean, we're, most African Americans are Democrats. We're not Republicans. And the guy was like, wait, what do you mean Republican? Evangelical, that's not a political word. And the guy said, oh yes, it is. And so this African American pastor wouldn't join this other group because if he were to join this other group, then all of the people in his circle would think that he too was evangelical and that was all of this right-wing fundamentalist Republican stuff that he didn't want to support. And it was the first time in my life that I realized, holy cow, people think of words differently than I do. And I built a relationship with that guy. And we eventually got to the place where we're, our church and their church are sharing a Bible study together on Wednesday nights. And it's the kind of thing where over that journey, I began to realize that maybe my own understanding is wrong and maybe I need to soften my understanding about some things so that I can understand the other person a little bit better so that then we can find out maybe where God is leading us in some of that. And my soul changed by being challenged with that little bit of maybe your definitions aren't totally accurate. But it went beyond that. During the early days of the coronavirus pandemic, mid-2020s, I know for a lot of people, they were really given a wake-up call when George Floyd was killed. But long before that, I had been in relationship with some other African-American pastors in town. And so long before the situation with George Floyd, I had already heard name after name after name of other people who had been killed unarmed by encounters with the police or something along those lines. And I had already seen and I had already heard and I had already felt the anguish from my friends over the circumstances that were affecting the lives that they were living and the people that they were trying to love and support and serve in their churches. And so then when the George Floyd thing happened, I was with them on the side of this has been going on far too long. It, for me, it wasn't a, oh my goodness, now I've realized something. For me, it was a once again sort of thing. And then in the aftermath of everything that happened with that, things around our church changed, things around society in general changed, dramatic shifts. And all of those experiences have deeply affected my soul in ways that I don't think I recognize, I don't think I would recognize myself from five years ago, 10 years ago. If you took me back to that person and then showed me this person, I'd be like, I don't want to ever be that person. But that's the person I am now. Somehow God has used my choices, but somehow he's also used the experiences that I've been in to just deeply shake and change the person that I am, like, like deeply. 